as free as it this time of year is this year compared to last year? Well, this time compared to last year, uh, night and day, because we had so many unknowns. Here. We didn't know when we were going to start, if we were going, um, who was going to be around. And, you know, that, I am cautiously optimistic. I don't think we're totally out of the woods on it with everything going on. Um, but I think we have right under 80% fully vaccinated. So hopefully that will curb a lot of the problems that we could, could, could potentially have. But uh, hopefully we're at least over the main phase of it. What about this year's team kind of keeps you up at night, so to speak? Maybe concerns or some answers you're still looking for? Secondary, probably. Uh, we, we lost some guys. Uh, we're moving some guys around. We had uh, some new guys come into the program that we haven't had a chance to. You know, we got a chance to see what Julius Brents could do. We got a chance to see what Rush East could do. Um, so I know kind of what, what their skill set is, but I didn't get a chance to see Sincere Mason, Reggie Stubblefield, or Amaris Brown even for that case because he was out all of spring. TJ Smith was out all of spring. Uh, there were so many guys out all of spring. Hunter Henry was out all of spring. So that's the area that we have to be really good at and, and can't afford to miss guys in fall camp. We need guys there every day so we can get a cohesive unit there. Um, something, something that happened back at Prairie View, I believe. I don't know the exact hiccup other than the fact that, that uh, uh, he had to do some things back at Prairie View to, to make sure that he was cleared. Uh, but he's somebody that uh, Coach Malone and I had been talking to for quite a while and uh, weren't going to give up on the situation because we felt there was still hope. And when we watched him on film, he really impressed us as a guy that could be versatile. We didn't know, uh, and still may not know, is he going to be a great nickel? Is he going to be uh, a corner? Does he have to be a boundary or field? Could he even play safety? He's done it all at Prairie View and uh, uh, talked to a lot of coaches in that league as well as uh, his coaches that said he was a terrific talent but a big, a really good competitor. And I guess that's what I've seen at some of the workouts is just the, his willingness and, and uh, ability to buy in and compete. TJ's going to have to play free safety for us. You know, Jerron's going to stay at strong safety. Uh, TJ's going to play, play free safety. Uh, it'll help us because we'll get, um, you know, TJ and Rushy's playing free safety. And then Jerron will play strong safety with Ross Elder, with uh, Hunter Henry. Ross will probably be the swing guy that can do a lot of things. I got to find out where Sincere Mason fits in as well. Well, he's recovered really well in the fact that he was just doing seven on seven uh, all spring long and probably throwing between 50 and 70 passes every other day. So we kind of eased him back in. Late in the spring, he probably got cut loose to throw it a little bit more. And I think probably a, a two or three week break in May helped him from finals to when we came back in June. And he's been cut loose ever since we got back. Um, and he's cleared for full contact now. What's full contact for a quarterback? But he's, he's cut loose for everything now. Well, we need to continue to uh, find more guys at the receiver spot. Everybody talks about uh, Malik, and Malik's got to be a really good player for us. Uh, Phillip Brooks can be a really good receiver for us. We know he's a great returner. Um, Sebastian Taylor missed spring ball, so he's still getting back from, a, from an injury. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what Cade Warner can do uh, coming in here. He's jumped in with both feet in the summertime. Uh, and he's played significant football in Nebraska, so I think he can help us. Uh, Jalen Travis probably impressed us as much as anybody in the spring of just making that quantum leap um, from fall to spring. Now can he have another leap into the fall? And then uh, Keenan Garber's probably a guy that uh, um, 
doesn't get mentioned enough that uh, can take the top off the defense. He does great speed, um, learning our offense. Uh, and then there's other kids that just, you know, whether it's Landry, Weber to Seth Porter to a lot of other guys, Eric Hommel and stuff, that we're just going to see where we're at. Well, I don't think they're going to be able to have a down game because I see a lot of people probably trying to take Deuce away and not put one guy on him, but make sure he's, he's uh, kind of bracketed inside and outside. That's what we saw late in the season. Um, but that also opens up opportunities for tight ends, you know, whether it's Daniel Limitor Bebe to Nick Lenners to Sammy Willard to Connor Fox to Ben, whoever else, they have to be able to step up and have really good years. Uh, as well as, you know, our, our, I'm, we're hoping our wide receivers get a lot more single coverage and, and a lot more um, single high looks uh, because people have got to probably keep somebody inside Produce. Uh, maybe so. I guess I'm, I'm just trying to think back on that. Watching him work in the off season, watching him spend countless hours with our training staff, um, and seeing where he's at now compared to where he was at. He was doing individual drills, uh, and I was working with him a little bit on, on the side in, in spring ball because we knew he couldn't do seven on seven or any competitive things. But seeing where he was at then compared to where he's at now, uh, and he's got to get his whole body back in shape to play the game. He's a really smart football player, so I, I don't worry about that part. He just gets the game, which is uh, a blessing to have as a secondary guy. But uh, uh, I think he's right on, on course. And if he can have a great month of July, because uh, that's when he really got cut loose, I think he won't miss a beat and be ready to go early August. Are you guys able to slide Chris Creepy inside at all yet to a more natural position? Or is it a situation where he still might play on the outside? We're going to have him play both. We're going to have KT play both. Um, those two guys are going to have to be swing guys. You know, Katori's going to play tackle and he's going to play guard. Um, you know, we we didn't have the luxury of, of having Taylor Poitier in spring ball. So everybody had to move around a little bit. Uh, but Coop's going to have to be able to do both. It, it a little bit depends on, on Christian Duffy's continued development. We're excited because I think Duff will have a really good uh, season this year. I think Carver Willis is ready to have a really good season. He's a little bit stronger. Uh, he's put on some more weight. That that allows us. We need to have Cooper be able to play a couple different spots and not just say, sorry, you got to play left tackle for the next five games. We have to be able to move some guys around. But I like that because we have some depth across the board inside with the O-line. Coach, um, you have a really experienced offensive line coming back. Can you just speak about how that's going to benefit your running backs and also how you think your running backs compared to that of the rest of the Big 12? Well, I don't know how we compare to the rest of the Big 12 uh, as far as we've got a really good running back like a lot of people do in Deuce. Uh, I, I like what we have behind him and Jacardier Wright and Joe Irvin and we've got a couple of freshmen I think could be pretty special that are, that are here this summer. Uh, but you're right, it's the offensive line that makes it all go and it's going to make Skyler go and it's going to make the wide receivers better. And we feel so much better about the offensive line than if we were sitting here last year when none of those guys had started. We were replacing five new guys in 2020, didn't get a spring ball, didn't get a summer, didn't get a fall camp, and we weren't very good in the O-line early on. Uh, and as the season went on, I think our offensive line improved as much as any unit on the team. And then watching them through spring ball, I think it's going to be a strength of our team. Coach, how much have you guys had to change on defense uh, from North Dakota State and the FCS level to Big 12? It's, I think it's ever evolving and we're continuing to, to adapt and adjust to some of the spread offenses uh, because we just so, probably see more of them here. Um, probably a few more teams have multiple wide receivers where at FCS and, and in North Dakota State there was always one guy, but we always had one guy that could take him, take care of him. So um, we've had to evolve, we're continuing to evolve. It still comes down to evolving or not, you better be able to prevent big plays. And we were not good at that last year. Uh, we gave up way too many explosive plays. And you can attribute that to uh, two simple things. One, we didn't tackle well enough and we didn't communicate well enough. And those are the things that 
as we move into fall camp, we don't we don't have enough time for all the things that we need to continue to do to get the secondary ready because of all the new faces. What sort of solutions do you find to having to defend so many good wide receivers? Is it just recruit more good defensive backs? Yeah, absolutely. Change the coverages, or how do you do it? Both. Continue to recruit. Um, we felt we did a good job with that, getting like a Julius Brenson here to match up. Uh, as to, to change some coverages and change some looks for some quarterbacks. But, uh, um, you know, it still comes down to there's a lot of on the island one on one plays. And uh, we had way more competitive drills with our wide receivers and our DBs this spring than we were able to do last fall, just trying to get to game to game, where in the spring we were trying to improve day to day. So I think our, our both our receivers and, and corners got better at just competitive 50 50 balls. He's done it so many times uh, before. He is always working on his craft. Uh, J-Mac is a guy that's probably improved as much as anybody over the last year as far as taking care of his body. J-Mac got beat up late in the year and he, know his, he knows his body got beat up late in the year. Part of it was he had to take all the practice reps as well as all the game reps because we didn't have any backup for him last year through the whole year. Um, and we have some more people to give him some uh, maybe a break, uh, but as well as um, let him let him heal up during the week and stuff. J Mac needs uh, not as many reps as some maybe a, a younger player does to be successful on Saturday. But he's just become such a great student of the game, and he brings guys with him. I like it because he grabs uh, Russ or he grabs TJ or grabs Ross Elder and grabs the guys and say, "Come on, let's go watch some film." Uh, and he's really become a great student of the game. Yeah, time will tell on that. That's a good point. Um, uh, we brought in a tackle, Kingsley, that uh, we're excited about, but we know he just came off of a season, and we need some depth at tackle, and, and Kingsley's got three years left, and he could redshirt. So we he's just getting started right now. So, I mean, he's only a couple weeks into it. So he might be mid-September before he's ready, but that might be okay, too. Uh, we might even be able to redshirt him. I don't know. Uh, but we felt like an athletic tackle like that, um, we needed to have uh, add to our team. And then with Tyrone, who just, I think, got cleared yesterday, um, he was able to come and do a workout because of the unofficial visit and stuff like that. We really liked what we saw, uh, and we have some older wide receivers, and, and we just wanted to... Uh, have another guy there that we could go to because that's probably the position that we weren't very durable last year as a wide receiver. So we need to continue to try to develop depth and competition. What have you seen from the linebacker unit to maybe not be as concerned as the To not be as what? Well, we're concerned about it. Just There's two guys that played a lot of football for us in Daniel Green and in Cody Fletcher. And, and, and Cody coming back and really not making that decision until late January uh, really helped us and elevated our, our defense because um, didn't get, probably got cheated a little bit about how many games and snaps he got a chance to play last year with the abbreviated season and, and uh, him missing some time. So uh, I'm excited for those two guys. I think those two guys had great spring. Uh, I'm excited about Nick Allen. Um, Nick earned a scholarship uh, this year uh, and uh, is a great special teams player, but also became a really good linebacker this spring. Uh, you've got a young man named Austin Moore that we're really excited about. Eric Munoz we're really excited about. Keenan Gaskin we're really excited about. We have some young players that I think will give us some uh, athleticism that we could probably give Daniel and, and Cody a break. But Daniel and Cody will play probably a lot more than the four-person rotation that we did last year just because of an experience factor. Coach, I'm curious. You, you obviously had great success at a different level of football. Over at Kansas, they're bringing in a coach with kind of a, a similar thing. Championships at yep. a different level. How, how do you think those kinds of things translate? What have you learned from that? And, and do you know any about his path coming to Kansas? Uh, Lance is uh, somebody that I've been very familiar with. met him several times. Uh, great hire. Lance Leipold's a, uh, a great football coach, but is a first-class guy. 
So uh, I was happy for Lance. A couple of his assistants I worked with in the past or know really well. Um, you know, all your experiences, no matter what level they are, no matter when they are, um, you just keep building a portfolio for yourself. There's things that I dig out that I that I used when I was an assistant to where I used at, at Iowa to North Dakota State. And you're always learning and you're always growing. And um, uh, I, I know Lance will do the same thing. Just try, we're always trying to. I learn. I learned so much and grew so much as a coach, as a mentor, as a leader, as a father, as a husband, as a as a figure to these kids uh, last year because I saw what kids were going through uh, throughout the pandemic and and uh, it was it was really really difficult on, on student athletes. Yeah. Well, uh, the media has has made it big right now. Um, I don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis because a kid wouldn't come to me and say, Coach, do you care if I do this or I'm going to do this? They have to disclose it to our, our compliance office. It's also so new that I know we've had a handful of student athletes. I don't know if they're all football players. We've had a handful of student athletes that have benefited from from uh, their name, image, and likeness, and, and profited off of it, and I'm all for it. I think they should, um, but it hasn't just encompassed my day yet because it's so. It was so new at the end of June, still scrambling and recruiting. But it, I think it will as we move forward in the fall, and we all keep learning more and more about it. Great coaching um, for starters. Uh, everybody recruits really well, and everybody um, prepares their roster on a year-to-year -year basis. Uh, tremendous talent in the, in the league, and um, defenses are getting better and better. And uh, I know offenses are, are dynamic in this league, but defenses are getting better and better. Uh, he's probably correct on it. I think Kansas kids are really underappreciated, and we're trying our darndest to recruit the heck out of the state of Kansas and get as many matriculated to K-State as we can because I know the value of uh, in-state kids uh, when you're playing an in-state school like our Kansas kids that uh, want to lay it on the line for each other so that uh, uh, they can win. Uh, and I think Kansas is a really under-recruited state. It's getting more and more recruited, Midwest at least, uh, with um, you know all the Big Ten and Big 12 schools that, that surround Can Kansas um, being in our state and doing a good job. And, and really for us, we, we need to win in the state of Kansas. But we've got to circle that map where a kid can drive and try to get as many regional kids as we can. And if they're Kansas kids, all the better. Well, if you try to call Nike and think you're going to get an order in right now, you're nuts. So I wouldn't think of a whole lot's going to go on right now and this year. Uh, but I know there's been talks uh, as we continue to move forward about some different combinations. But I think Gene and I were supposed to go out there three times in the last 18 months, and they've all been canceled. And so I don't see much happening. Everybody's going to try to get through with what they have this year. Yeah, he got put into a tough spot in the fact of he came in as a as an early and missed the entire spring and winter, um, the entire summer. Uh, showed up and, and practiced for the first few days in the fall. We're like, this kid's a deep, talented player. He's 17 years old. Thank heavens he gets to sit this year and watch. And lo and behold, in the third game, he gets thrust into it at 17 years old and had poor with, with many of our receivers and stuff. If you'd ask our players uh, that went the most improved kid from, from fall to spring, the majority would say Will Howard because of just how much the game slowed down for him. Plus, he put on 15 pounds of muscle. 
He got faster, and I think he's a good athlete already, but he got faster, he got stronger, he got better velocity on the ball. Um, he was banged up with a shoulder that not many people knew about, but you could probably tell, uh, and healthy. There's a Will Howard, and we are blessed because a lot of places you're trying to see, man, does our number one have a chance to stay healthy? We've got two returning starters at that position, as we see it as coaches, and some younger kids that are pretty good as well that uh, I'm excited about the future for Will. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Brock was phenomenal, and he taught so many people how to do things the right way and how to watch film and how to incorporate. Seth Porter, Nick Allen, Landry Weber are going to run our special team. Those four kids are going to do everything that Brock did. Now we just have four guys doing it. So I'm excited. Our kids are doing special teams drills on their own in the summer, led by those four guys designing drills and having guys run through it. We have to be phase of the game. And I'm excited because we have a kid like Philip Brooks back and Malik back and guys that can return it as well. Yeah, for, for two games, they had to take them all and uh, take them all the practice reps as well as take a lot of special teams reps. But there's a lot of guys like that, whether it's Ross Elder uh, or, or a T. Denson or a Taylor Poitier. Uh, so thrust into roles that maybe they weren't quite ready for or maybe it shouldn't have been as expanded as it was, but it was. And so I'm excited because those kids are that much more experienced they're bigger they're stronger and we're adding more more kids whether that's recruits or kids that are coming back Coach Scott. yeah there's something about him um he's one of my son's best friends so i see him a lot uh and i don't know we just we've always clicked and we had conversations before i was at uh k-state when we recruited him in north dakota state so uh, I've known a lot about him. I recruited the Kansas City area um, when he was even a younger player and I was an assistant. So I just have always clicked with him and I feel so blessed because I was excited to have two years with him. Now I'm getting a freebie year with him. Yeah, Joe Hall, our player development director, did a great job of staying in contact with him on a daily and weekly basis. Um, it was a hard year for him. I know it was, but um, he wanted to come back, and, and we welcomed him with open arms. Um, he he had to prove himself all over again, which he did a good job of. I thought he had a, a terrific spring, and you saw some sparks of when that kid did as a true freshman. If you recall, he played four games, and then it was our agreement that he was going to shut it down so we didn't lose a year of eligibility. And so I, I'm excited to see what he can do. Yep, he, he's easier, he communicates so much better. He's open more, he feels comfortable. I'd say the same thing about Jacardier Wright. Both those two kids are part of that freshman class. I think say the same thing about Clyde Price. All three of those kids were part of a freshman class uh, that uh, it's fun. they're getting their opportunity. They're all gonna have a chance to be contributors. They're all so much more mature and I'm excited for them. Go ahead. Yeah. It happens uh, at least twice a week early on, and now it's probably died down a little bit because a lot of coaches are gone a little bit. Our compliance office and our administrators have done a great job of always having educational sessions. Um, and the fact that it can't come from a coach to set something up or anything, it's all going through the compliance office. Uh, I, think, I think our kids have a, a, a kind of a brief generalization of what it's about. 
but as they're learning more, they're going to they're going to be able to utilize it more and more. Uh, and we have to be a great resource for them. We got to be able to help them. We've got to be able to help navigate some things. Uh, but I, I, our hats off to our compliance office and Julie Owen. We just hired a new compliance officer, and Julie Owen is phenomenal, and uh, she's done a great job with education. We don't have one right now. You know, we're about 80% vaccinated and everything's open right now. I don't know what will happen in the in the in August and September. Our kids that are not vaccinated still do a surveillance test a few times a week to make sure that they are still safe testing positive. The kids that are, are vaccinated don't do the surveillance testing. Uh, but I don't know what's going to happen across the landscape of our school to the Big 12 to the NCA moving forward in the fall. For him, you're saying? I, I would um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah I, I'm not quite sure um, how he phrased that or what he kind of meant on it, but I think it's it's the consistency that we're all looking for on a week-to-week -week basis. And it doesn't matter if you play OU or Texas Tech or any of our non-conference games. You better prepare uh, every day uh, or you're going to get beat on Saturdays. It's just the bottom line. This this college football is so competitive and there's so much parity uh, that uh, if you're not ready to play, you're going to get beat. So you better be able to prepare. Well, it really helps this year more than ever simply because uh, of the pandemic. Those guys spent a lot of quality time just with their own position and then to be able to see those kids uh, for the next year I think that's been really really important for us uh, we made a conscious effort the entire the entire month of uh, or excuse me the entire spring semester our kids had to come up every day to just pop their head in because we missed them the entire fall we're talking about uh, life academics whatever but we just wanted to see their faces so we could get those bonds built back up again Um, we couldn't stop him, you know, and uh, he's, he's a terrific running back, and um, we weren't probably at our best either. Um, and, you know, I thought Deuce played well. I thought our offense played well, but um, he's, he's a special talent. It was a relief, and it was the longest month I've ever been a part of in my life. We had people on campus every day. Uh, June 1st through June 30th. Uh, didn't matter if it was a Monday, if it was a Sunday, we had unofficial visitors, official visitors, um, uh, camps, everything, and it was a nonstop deal. I'm hopeful that if we can get back onto a normal recruiting calendar where, where coaches are out in April and May, it will go back to a normal June because you should be able to enjoy June and get around your own players. We didn't have that opportunity. Um, the downside would be, because I, I was involved in, in playoff systems at, at um, North Dakota State, and it hurt recruiting because December, you better be in homes. And you better be visiting with parents and visiting with kids, and we didn't do that. We usually had the kids locked up by then at North Dakota State, and if we lost them to a Minnesota or an Iowa, we were going to lose them anyway. But as big as recruiting is, everywhere but as much as it's garnered more and more um, energy over the last few years they're going to have to make a decision that if you're in that playoff you, your coaches are going to stay in because you're trying to win for that team that's in front of you you better be able to send a grad assist on the road a qc on the road an analyst on the road something so that you can continue to keep that ball rolling with recruiting or either it's the teams that aren't in the 12th playoff they're going to go visit those kids in those schools and say, well, I'm here. Why isn't Wyatt here to visit you? And uh, they're going to have to be able to find a way to that that doesn't affect 
the time that you're typically out on the road uh, as, as coaches. How is the change? How is the changes uh, that you've experienced during the COVID of Zoom conferences, and how has that changed the way that you could recruit or you could be into homes, more homes, more often? It, it changed as far as you could get on multiple families and have uh, support staff. You know, we'd have five or six families and, and have. Uh, uh, our academic staff, our, our strength and conditioning staff, our nutrition staff, so you could probably hit more people um, in, in, a, in a short time. But it just, it, it's no different than, than us doing this as a Zoom call. I can look at you and answer your question as opposed to looking wherever, not knowing if you turned your screen off, no care what I answer the question to me. Because I, I get meetings on Zoom because none of those kids would keep pictures. If you're camera on so I can see. Uh, so you know I think we're going to be become more efficient when we need to be uh, but uh, I'm glad the zoom world hopefully is over with so what are the things that you out of this last year that you will take forward and use and what are the things that you don't want to ever see ever again um, I don't want to see the surveillance testing three times a week uh, and stuff before you get on a, a bus and a plane and the anxiety you have when all of a sudden some kid's not on the bus and you're like, where the heck's he at? Well, everybody knows where he's at. Uh, and, and I don't know if we're going to be done with surveillance testing. I really don't. Um, I, I don't look forward to that. I, I think to the point we talked about, I think it could help just Zoom in five families and getting four coaches and some sports staff on there to try to hit more people at once. But uh, um, the more people can get on your campus, Kansas State and, and the city of Manhattan are a place where you have to get your feet on the ground. you got to get your boots on the ground. If you don't have your feet on the ground, you don't get to appreciate what a great town it is, what a great campus it is, what a great stadium it is. Uh, and, um, you know, that's what I hope we get back to uh, as soon as or when kids can start visiting campuses for games. When uh, in June you guys had the waiver to do the one hour private workout with recruits, how much did you guys utilize that? Too much. Yeah. What did you think of it? Did, uh, was there a value to it for you guys? Uh, um, there was a value to it, but I I didn't I didn't like it. I hope that in April and May I can send the coaches out and they can work out that kid and see what that see what that's like. Who I felt bad for were our athletic trainers because. You can easily say, hey, we're only going to have this at, at 2 o'clock today. Inevitably, somebody's going to get screwed up in travel, and then you're asking a trainer, hey, can you do this at 10, come back out at 2? Oh, by the way, this kid's going to show up at 5, and the one that was going to show up with him, he's late, he's coming at 7. So then our trainers were out there five times for an hour. Um, you know, it was benefit for us, but... Uh, I hope we don't have to do that anymore. What kind of, I said, would there be a, some tweaks that could be done to make it useful, more useful for you guys? No, I just wish we'd go back to the same stuff where it's just April and May, yeah. you know, and, and, and have coaches get out there on the road and, and can get the Because we know who the players are ready because of our time in the winter uh, that you should know, okay, hey, this coach, you're going to look at these five kids work out or, or practice or whatever it is. And to try, again, trying to get these kids to come here um, for a workout. Would you like to be on the road in the spring as the head coach? Or? I'd love to be on the road, yeah. We've missed so much time, uh, and, you know, December and Jan January is great, but it's limited. I I'd, I'd love to be able to uh, to be – in FCS, we were on the road all the time. So I I'd love to be able to have coaches on the road.